Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 22. And in this tutorial, I'm going to speak to you guys about the for loop. Okay? So by now, some of you guys, or hopefully all of you guys, have watched my previous two videos on the while loop and the do while loop. And maybe on purpose, or maybe by accident, you left out your counter variable or you forgot to increment your counter variable inside the loop. And by doing this, you made an infinite loop, okay? And you would have noticed that when you tried to run that loop in Firefox or something, you would have made Firefox crash and then you would have had to push alt control delete and you know try and end your program in the task manager so you would have learned that infinite loops are bad but for the smart ones that actually listen to me then hopefully you guys didn't do that okay but now a for loop kind of solves that problem for us so we don't have people making infinite loops by accident okay and the reason why a for loop can solve that problem for us is because it includes a built-in counter and also a way to increment our variable every time the loop restarts or reiterates okay so we don't have to do that ourselves physically we don't have to like declare our variable separately and then worry about incrementing it inside of the loop or anything our for loop does all of that for us so let's take a look at the syntax and then this will probably make a lot more sense okay so to make a for loop we type in the keyword for because this is a for loop duh so after that we put in our parentheses and then our curly braces and by now you know that all of the statements that we want to execute will go inside here so that would be our statements okay and I spelled that wrong but who cares okay now inside our parentheses this is gonna be a little bit different okay you guys are used to going ahead and just putting in a condition but that's not what happens in a for loop okay I'm saying okay a lot but yeah okay <laughs> so in a for loop we actually put in three separate statements so they all get separated by a semicolon the first statement is where we tell JavaScript to start counting so this will be declaring our counter so we start on the first statement the second statement is our condition so this is going to tell JavaScript basically where to end the for loop. And the last statement is our increment. Okay, that is where we increase our variable by one or by however many you want to increase your variable by every time the loop runs again. Okay, so let's go ahead and just delete all of this. And to tell JavaScript where to start our variable, we have to go ahead and we declare a new variable. But we don't have to type in the keyword var or anything like that. Okay. All we have to do is type in our variable name. So I could go ahead and type counter in over here. But I'm not going to do that. And the reason why I did that in the previous tutorials was just so that you guys kind of understood what that variable was for. But as programmers, or you'll most likely see programmers, whenever working with a loop, they just name their variable one letter. And it's usually I or J or K. Sometimes X, but not too often. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and name mine I just to be like everyone else and I'll set that equal to zero. Put my semicolon in there and this just means that our loop is now starting at zero because our counter starts at zero. 
then we have to put in our condition. So this will be when do we want our loop to end or how long do we want our loop to continue. So we can just say keep repeating while i is less than 10. So that means as soon as i becomes 10, stop and don't go any further. Okay, now we've got i starting at 0 and we know it needs to end when i gets to 10 but we need to increase i every time the loop runs so that this condition will hopefully be false uh, one day. So let's go ahead and just put in uh, our increment which is i plus plus so that just means increase i by 1 every time the loop runs again. If you wanted to, you could be fancy and you could uh, try and increase i by 3 or something. But yeah, let's just keep it at 1 for now. So i++, plus plus, that is the most common uh, increment for a loop anyway. And now let's give our loop something to do. So we can probably just type something out on the screen, pretty basic, like document.write. And then we could write... Um, this loop ran so many times so we'll include our i variable and that'll tell us how many loop how many times the loop ran and I'll just uh, concatenate on the word times and a break tag just to be clear on how many times our loop actually ran. So let's go ahead and save that and run in Firefox. And as you can see, our loop has run 10 times because 0 to 9, that is 10 times. You can go ahead and count it if you want, if you don't trust me. But uh, basically, yeah, that's what happens. So every time our loop ran, it printed out the sentence. This loop ran however many our counter was sitting on at the time which when we started we started at zero so this loop ran zero times and I guess that doesn't make too much sense but hey I, I well I started at zero so there we go and I have a text and it's just a girl I asked her if she's playing sport or she plays sport and she told me no gross hmm okay whatever cool so back to the tutorial um, so why did this happen well let's go ahead and look at our code and then I can explain everything so uh, basically what we told our variable or our program we told JavaScript we're gonna write or we're gonna use a for loop okay and then we told our for loop to start counting from 0 and end when our counter gets to 10. So keep going until i is equal to 10 or, or what, keep going while i is less than 10. Which means when i gets to 10, stop. Okay. And then we just increased i by 1 every time and we printed that out on the screen. Cool. So I'm pretty sure some of you guys are wondering when to use a for loop or a while loop or a do while loop. And let me just say that there are going to be certain times when a for loop works better than a while loop and certain times where a do while loop works better than all the rest. So it basically just depends on the problem you are trying to solve and uh, you'll just have to know basically which loop is going to work the best so you can go ahead and test each one of them but here are some helpful hints I guess basically use a for loop when you know how many times you want your loop to run because you can control that okay then a while loop and a do while loop you can use when you don't know how many times you want your loop to run um, and then a do while loop is basically you don't know how many times you want your loop to run but you do know that it must run at least once okay 
So that's actually all the help I can give you. And that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial, actually. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment and like my video, especially if you found this video helpful, because it's really going to help my channel grow. And that's all. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.